Hi all. Uh, it's been a while since I've sort of posted anything uh, informative, I guess, in, on YouTube. But what I've got here is a patch I've been and I'm still working on. It's work in progress uh, in Max. But what I've got here is a complex oscillator patch, um, inspired pretty much by the Verbos. Eurorack module, the harmonica oscillator, which, yeah, one of those modules I'm still lusting after. Very, very nice, and got some unique features that make it desir desirable. Uh, okay, so I'll just run through and give you a bit of a demo on what I've got happening at this stage. And as you can see here, there's a MIDI input select at the top, and I'm using a Keith McMillan Q Nexus uh, portable keyboard, which is you know, quite a neat little unit. Um, underneath that is is a harmonic scan, and just to explain this, what's actually happening is you've basically we've got a, a bank of sine wave oscillators, eight of them in total, but they're tuned specifically to the harmonics or the harmonic series of a you know, arbitrary fundamental frequency. So with the eight you can yeah run up to the first eight harmonics and that allows for quite a, a range of different timbre just alone with sine waves but uh, what I've also done here is uh, route each harmonic or partial through its own wave folder and actually got the code for the wave folder from Randy Jones of Madrona Labs who kindly shared the uh, patch on my Wigglers so I've made some use of that it's quite a cool patch I mean I couldn't grok the math behind what's going on with the wave folder patch it's, uh, you know, it's a bit beyond my capabilities but uh, I can, you know, certainly get use out of it, and it's definitely a, a cool patch to play around with and run sounds through. Uh, it's quite a neat wave folder, you know, and uh, yeah, Randy Jones makes great stuff. So just turn it on, and first off, you're probably racing to cover your ears because it's just this. Well. I don't know, it's not exactly pleasant, but I'll, uh, I'll take these back down and you can I'll go through some simple steps and you can see just how much potential we've got for manipulation of timbre, which is my whole goal. Uh, a lot of the patches I make are complex sequences or, um, you know, like elaborate complex patches self-generating stuff I tend to I'm not that experienced with Max I've been working with it for probably a year or so and love it I enjoy it a lot but I'm still learning and trying to soak up as much knowledge on uh, Max as I go so my patches basically stay pretty simple uh, I'll unlock the patch and Here you can see the actual workings and you've got the oscillators along the top. These boxes along here are the wave folders. Each one has a, well there's dual controls for it and it's dynamically, it responds to dynamics as well like the, the fader levels. So if you crank the gain on each part or harmonic, you in effect increase the distortion from the wave folding and it's yeah it's neat. I've also added LFOs to each harmonic and a you know variable depth modulation depth amount which just as some like I tend to use it subtly like you can uh, you know, open it all the way up and it's very noticeable uh, it's the scanner. 
So if we we just got this partial here, fourth harmonic playing, and I'll just because it's the fourth harmonic, it's fairly high pitch, and like I'm playing low notes on my MIDI keyboard here, so that's you know fourth times the fundamental frequency, and you can hear that pitch drop, slow pitch fall because the mod depth is up you know at its maximum but I tend to just use it subtly for like really subtle detuning and just like just thickens the timbres you make up uh, yeah it's pretty common synthesis trick and then if we increase the timbre parameters you can see the wave folding going on there in the scope And you really need to pay attention to your levels because, like I was saying, it affects the amount of wave following. But once you clear it, it just kills it. Like it's just a cut off. It's like oh, I won't punish you. And the harmonics can be scanned through, like, with a a crossfader in a sense with multiple inputs uh, if we turn those up you'll hear them see so, how yeah, the higher gain levels you get wave folding We've got here, I'll uh, put it back into presentation. This is basically the GUI of this oscillator. It's, it's just an oscillator. It's, you know, I've set it up here as a sub patch so you can route them off or duplicate them. And, you know, you probably wouldn't want to use too many of them because there's fair, quite a few parameters there to work with. But, uh, once they overstopped anyone. And yeah, getting back to this harmonic scan. I've incorporated an LFO into it, it's only a sign. I'll probably develop more wave shapes. And then I've also added a input for signal for external modulation. So turn that on and you can see that LFO rate is this little box here. It goes up to say 20 hertz. Well actually it goes higher. Just bear with me a sec. Ah uh, don't worry I've got to open the uh, sub patch. So we're better in B patches and Hustle. So you get some nice random sweeping through the different harmonics. And this down here is, well, you've got two mixes, like you've got a crossfader and then there's two outputs. One is a composite signal of all the, all the oscillations, like all the partials together. And if we go, whoops, if we go back to this side, composite side, that's all sine waves simultaneously. As this side is just the scanner, and the center is even balance of both outputs. And yeah, I've got the MIDI keyboard there. So I also start adding some subtle modulation to these. It can get pretty interesting. 
Very, very slow LFO, uh, very, very small amounts of modulation, really, really effective. Sorry, I'm like OCD with this stuff. Just, yeah. So yeah, you've got your on and off, and yeah, I've still got a few ideas I want to incorporate into it more. Inputs for external modulation, and we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, more wave shapes for the LFOs, and I'll probably try and uh, get all these bugs. I've still got a few issues like the scope. <laughs> There's manual offset. So I'd really like to try and work out a way to have this as a smooth sweep through the harmonics instead of just like a like a steppy you know uh, I still have to think about that but yeah but getting back to this manual offset if you keep it at zero keyboard will retain its standard Western Equal Temperament tuning. Play with the wave folders, they're lots of fun. See the difference a gain makes to the signal and wave shape. This scope is, is the sum of all the signals and it's in two dimensions or two axes x and y so it's it doesn't look like a typical waveform it just looks like a it's like a blotchy green moving bunch of squiggly lines Press that right up. And uh, I've also done, I've just at this stage, I've only got one 
modulation input for amplitude and sorry about that. Um, I've got another oscillator sine wave set up here as a modulator for the amplitude. So we turn it back on. You can hear that. I didn't realise that was going the whole time. Anyway. Something strange going on here. I wonder what's happened here. It's a bit weird. Not behaving as it should be. Okay, so we need to have amplitude from that. Uh, what if we just send a constant? I'm, I'm going to have to do some more work on this, but uh, I know I've got a few ideas that we need to work on. So you might get a good idea about that and I might wrap this up. If you've got any questions or you'd like to try the patch, uh, any ideas on what I can do to improve it, suggestions are most welcome. And if you're interested in getting the patch on, yeah, I'd be happy to share it around. Um, so just pay me with some details and I'll uh, get back to you. Alright, cheers for watching.